Good morning and welcome to Firematic TV. My name is Jim Featherstone and what I'd like to do this morning is give you a walk around on Pierce's new Responder commercial pumper. Before we talk about some of the specifics of the Responder, to set the stage, the two-door commercial pumper segment in the fire apparatus market has remained essentially unchanged for the last 30 years. A two-door commercial cab with a seat for the driver and a two-thirds wide bench for the two passengers. <coughs> a body that has very little compartmentation, a 1250 pump and a thousand gallon tank. With the responder, we're seeking to address a lot of issues and to fundamentally change the, the two-door commercial market. First, the responder is available on either an international or a Freightliner chassis. And you'll notice that the cab I'm standing next to is a two-door extended cab. The two-door extended cab, and we'll take a look in more detail at the seating when we're on the other side of the vehicle, but the two-door extended cab allows us to carry a crew of three and provide SCBA seating for both the officer and the third crew member. In addition, it allows for both inside or outside access compartmentation in the cab. The pump on the responder is a 1250 GPM single-stage waterous pump. The thing that makes it different is its packaging. You'll notice a very compact pump panel. In addition, this pump is also set up to provide pump and roll. Especially in rural markets, pump and roll is something that's very important and in the past often it's required a department to specify a second or auxiliary pump. What we're seeking to do with the responder is to provide that pump and roll or shoot and scoot kind of performance as well as provide fixed pumping at once again a GPM rating of 1250. You'll notice in the standard configuration we have two two and a half inch discharges, a six inch intake, and a two and a half inch gated inlet on the driver's side. Above the small pump panel, you'll notice two cross lays. Let me remove the netting for just a minute. These cross lays, as you can see, are mounted very low providing a very attractive pull height for a firefighter who's trying to take them off. In addition, you'll notice that there are pull-out plastic trays that allow the trays to be removed, placed on the ground, the hose to be repacked on the ground, and then the, the cross lays being placed back on the vehicle. The objective is to keep people off the top of the truck as much as possible. Now, if we move back to the driver's side front compartment, you'll notice that many of the pump controls, including the throttle, the master gauges, and controls for all of the pre-connects, are all located inside in a closed compartment. Two things here. First, what we're seeking to do is protect the valves and instrumentation from the elements, to basically expose them to the elements only when they're needed, to provide an integrated operator's position with storage below the panel, but as importantly, we're seeking, by placing the pump controls for the pre-connects, et cetera, here, we're seeking to make sure that the operator is not standing over or immediately next to hose lines that may be entering or leaving the pump panel. Compartmentation is a real hallmark of the responder. In addition to the driver's side front compartment, there are two additional compartments, an over wheel well compartment and an aft compartment. 26 inches deep in the bottom, 12 inches deep at the top. You'll also notice that all of the compartment accessories are completely modular. When it comes to shelves, even compartment lights, they're all bolted into these integral tracks that are built into the body. In the rear area, full depth compartmentation at the, at the bottom removable partitions so that the driver's side, passenger side, and center rear compartments can be either individually segregated as is the case here or that those, those can be removed and you can get full through access to all of those compartments. The responder is available with two water tank sizes currently. 1,000 gallons and 750 gallons. What you see on this particular unit is a 1,000 gallon tank. And that 1,000 gallon tank <clears throat> provides an attractive height and it's also designed 
so that there are steps provided not only up the back of the body but there's a half step style arrangement full width to provide a transition from the rear of the truck up into the hose bed. In a sense it's sort of a back to the future proposition for Pierce because this was a design that we used many years ago. In addition there's a large center rear compartment and I want to make mention of the fact that the responder that we're looking at here is a responder that has almost no additional option content. This is about as close as you're going to get to a standard out-of-the-box configuration. And the reason I mention that is because there's a very important feature that isn't easily seen as we do this walk around, but I'm going to try to highlight it and hopefully when we get a chance to uh, film or video another responder we can show this to you in more detail. What you'll notice behind this shelf is you'll see a removable panel. Well that removable panel on this particular vehicle is concealing an equipment deck that is integrated into the cradle for the water tank. And this equipment deck can be used for many different things. For example, you could use it to store a folding tank. Another thing that would be very popular would be carry up to three hard suction sleeves. You could do it for other types of equipment as well. But what we envision is probably the most popular use for it moving forward is it gives you the ability to store the ground ladders and pike poles low and horizontal immediately below the tank. <clears throat> Were the ladders carried here, what you'd have is basically a compartment box that extends into the compartment, a flip down door, and you'd be able to take the ladders out horizontally very easily at a very, very low pole height. Now what makes that doubly important is that what that does for the passenger side of the vehicle. So as we move around there, I'll ask you to envision a couple things with me in addition to what you see here in the standard configuration. Before we walk up the passenger side of the body, one of the things I like to point out just in terms of some of the finesse that's provided in this product. Notice, for example, the angle tail board. So an awful lot of design characteristics of the vehicle that are very much designed around keeping in mind the operating environment in rural and the, in the ever-growing ex-urban areas of the country. Just as a quick aside, what we see happening in the country is that nearly 25% of the population now lives in areas that are neither rural nor suburban or urban, but in that area that's sort of growing beyond the suburbs, which is often now called the exburbs. On this particular vehicle, we see a standard low side configuration. SCBA cylinder compartments, ladders mounted on the side, folding ladder, availability to do pike poles. Once again, a very basic con configuration, but if I, <coughs> excuse me, going back to what we did at the rear, let's say we took the ladders off the side, put them in that rear storage compartment. What that does is opens up the passenger side for full high side compartmentation. Once again, traditionally in the two-door commercial market for rural and exurban departments, it's always been high left and low right. What we have here is the ability to do a high high and store the ladders internally. In addition to that, when we do that high high configuration, the passenger side front compartment is not only full height, but it is also full depth from top to bottom, providing us a jump off style compartment where crew members can quickly access needed equipment, EMS gear, etc. But once again, a full height, full depth compartment immediately behind the pump panel. In its standard configuration, the responder has one two and a half discharge on the passenger side. Additional intakes and a six inch steamer are optional on the passenger side.